You guys are stuck? All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Brandon, and I'm here with my co-speaker, Puff. Uh, and today we're gonna talk to you a little bit more about Tacton uh, Build Pipeline uh, and how we're achieving salsa level three with that, with the help of Spiffy and Spire. Um, so to start off, I, I think most of you have seen this slide like probably 100, 100 times, so I'm not gonna spend too much time. Uh, oops. All right. <laughs> They didn't really want you to see this slide anymore. So, <laughs> um, so Salsa is um, the supply chain levels for artifacts. Um, basic idea is uh, how do you supply the artifacts in your supply chain. Um, uh, the, the relevant parts of Salsa in this talk, since most of you probably are familiar uh, with concepts like that since we're in security supply chain con, um, is the Salsa level. So Salsa levels go from right now Salsa level one to Salsa level four. And you have level one, which is like your build processes must be fully scripted, automated, and generate provenance, all the way to level four, where you know you want to enforce that you have hermeticity, you have reproducibility, and a, a whole lot more. And today, what we're going to do is we're going to try and target and see how we can achieve salsa level three um, with Tecton. And this means being a salsa level three builder. Uh, focuses really on guaranteeing the integrity of the provenance, making sure that it cannot be falsified. Um, so for the uninitiated, for this Tecton, uh, Tecton is an open source built pipeline that runs on top of Kubernetes. Um, so what it does is it uses Kubernetes um, as an orchestration platform for all the build steps that run as containers and pods in Kubernetes. Um, but what it essentially is really is Similar to if you use GitHub Actions, Travis CI, or Circle CI, it is um, a build tool that lets you define what your build steps are and to be able to generate a build. So let's talk a little bit about um, Tecton. And for this entire presentation, we're gonna use uh, the minimal example. So um, Tecton lets you define multiple types of build constructs the smallest of those constructs is something called a task run, uh, which you can imagine is just a series of steps. So imagine GitHub Actions, single, um, you have just a bunch of series of steps, check out, um, build, generate provenance, something like that. Uh, so what happens is in the flow of Tecton, a user first generates a task run, and what happens then is two things. Now the Tecton pipeline controller uh, detects that the task run is created, and so what it does is, okay, let me go down the list. I'm looking at the first part of the build step. I'm going to create a pod um, to run the build step. And at the same time, I'm going to update this object, the task run object, um, to say that, okay, I've started the first build step. It's running now. Um, and what happens is after the pod is run, uh, the controller then takes the results of the pod execution and then updates the task run object, right? Because we need to know what are the certain outputs, uh, what are the, the information that um, came out of the build step that we update the provenance fields. And so what happens is that uh, this cycle hap continues, and so it does this until all the build steps are complete. Uh, at that point, it marks uh, the task run is completed, and you know, that, meta, that piece of metadata can then be consumed. So another component um, that we want to introduce is something called Tecton Chains. And really, the, the main role of Chains here is um, to be an observer of the Tecton pipelines. Right? We want to be able to, uh, I, be able to generate a signature or attesta attestation of what happened in the pipeline. So basically, any artifacts that are generated within the Tecton pipeline um, the process will be observed by chains, so chains can then create an attestation to say that this particular sort of, uh, artifact was built through this pipeline, and these were all the steps that happened, these were the outputs that happened. And that's all part of being able to identify and really audit uh, the build process of a particular artifact so that we can trust it. So just with Tecton pipelines and Tecton chains today, uh, what we see that we can actually easily um, get to Salsa level two. Um, as a builder, it meets all the build requirements and provenance requirements for Salsa level two. 
Um, but we see that we are missing one important requirement that will get us to social level three. And this is the only one that's missing, which is uh, non-falsifiability for provenance. So as a quick recap, what exactly is non-falsifiability? So non-falsifiability is really about, you know, the, the built metadata that is produced um, by the process should not be able to be modified by a malicious actor such that the sign provenance um, is not accurately reflecting the build. Right. So in the Salsa, Salsa tree definition, uh, this is broken down to three different points. Um, the first two talks about how the key is stored and how the key is managed. Um, so in this case, you know, a signing key must be stored in a secure key management system. Um, the provenance signing key must not be accessible to the built environment. Make sure it's isolated. And the great thing here is that Tecton Chain um, kind of handles these two cases already by having a, um, the signing key be in chains and not in the pipeline. And in addition, you can configure Tecton Chains to also use uh, a remote signing service such as Vault. Where it gets tricky is this last part. So the last point in this definition says that every field in the province must be generated or verified by the build service in a control plane. Um, and essentially what this means that is if we look at the Salsa provenance document that describes the build, we should be able to say that every field in it was not able to be um, malici maliciously modified by a bad actor. Right. And in particular, this is a difficult problem in Tecton for a couple of reasons. Um, the provenance metadata fields are difficult to lock down, and this is because of the way that users interact with Tecton, as well as how Tecton usually is deployed and provided as a service. So for example, um, we saw in the initial flow that Tecton users create the task run object to initiate a build, right? Um, this is part of the Kubernetes API, it's part of the mechanics, and what we see is that um, they have access directly to these objects because they need to create them and modify them, but at the same time, the controller is the one that's adding all this metadata to it. Um, in addition, if we really wanted to kind of push it a little bit further and talk about deployment models. You know, usually Kubernetes cluster, clusters are managed by different entities. Um, so if we want to really think about a more advanced threat model where Kubernetes admins possibly have access to the API server, uh, how can we lock them down? And this is an example of the task run object. So you can see at, um, if you're familiar with Kubernetes, basically uh, there are multiple parts of the object. There is a specification where you determine what do I want this task run to be. By the same time, you have this section called status, which talks about what happened and the controller updating uh, the information in the fields in it. And so you can see there are, there are multiple steps here. You know, you have one part that says you know the build succeeded. Uh, you can imagine a malicious actor taking a build that failed and ma making it such that it succeeded and changing the hashes. Another thing that we see here is at each build step, we have outputs that talk a little bit about the artifacts um, hash or information about the artifact that is being produced. Uh, now the, the important thing here is if a malicious actor can then go in and modify the hash, basically they can create provenance uh, for another artifact that wasn't actually being built. So what you can see here is that the task run object becomes kind of a main attack point uh, for malicious actors. And basically anywhere around the entire process of the build, where there's a reconciliation, wherever you run a new port, you want to update the status of it, a malicious actor can come in and modify these fields. So the question now is like, how do we solve non-false survivability? Um, and like any any great solution comes with a three-step <laughs> three model. Um, so the first thing we have to do is we want to determine who is able or which entities are able to modify these particular fields, and we want to restrict access to them. So we first create uh, a testable trusted computing base. Um, so in this case, the, the only 
uh, entities that should be able to modify the provenance fields are the tecton controllers themselves and very limited for each individual build step, the outputs of their build step. Um, step two of this is to enforce the integrity of um, the fields by signing them um, with the trusted computing base. So the components in the trusted computing base would sign the fields that they produce such that and verify them every time they consume them. So this means that if a malicious actor came in to modify something, they will be able to detect it because uh, verification will fail. Uh, and last but not least, all this is gonna be consumed by Tecton chains to then generate the provenance. Um, so Tecton chains will uh, use the, um, the certificate authority of the trusted computing base to be able to verify all the fields were not tampered with. So what we end up now is that because the task run is locked down, um, the areas in which we saw malicious actors trying to modify the task run is now prevented. Cool. So now we talked about the, the, um, what we should do. Uh, let's talk a little bit of how we will do it. And so uh, what we'll be using is the project Spiffy Inspire. Um, so Spiffy Inspire at a very high level is a zero trust workload identity specification and framework. Um, but buzzwords aside, like what does it really mean for us? Um, so the first part of this is that uh, Spiffy Inspire first provides attestation, strong attestation to create the trusted computing base. So in Spiffy Inspire, you can say that I want to provide a workload identity for a particular container or port in Kubernetes and say that this container has to have these particular, um, um, this is running this particular image or has this particular ID and it goes all the way from the workload itself as well as the infrastructure it's running on. So you can say that I wanna make sure that um, this workload has this identity only if it's running on a particular node in my cloud or a particular node in my infrastructure and it's running a particular image or has a particular ID. Um, so what Spiffy Inspire does then is after a um, workload is being run, it's provided with ephemeral signing keys and certificates tied to those attestations. So we can then use these signing keys to then sign the information that um, the provenance metadata and fields that are generated throughout this entire process, right? So in this case, build steps would be able to sign the output of their build step um, with their own key and the Tecton controller can modify and sign the task run status fields as well. So now I'm gonna pass it on to Path mm -hmm. that will go through the architecture and give a demo. All right, so let's talk about the architecture. Um, so starting off, like, we would want a Spire server instantiated, right? So a Spire server, right, um, because it's, it's, it could be uh, attacked by itself, so we want it to be in a separate protected uh, Kubernetes cluster. So we see that in the architecture that it's separate from where we deploy the pipeline controller as well as the change controller. So it's separated out. At the same time, when Inspire server is instantiated, we also wanna um, bootload some of the things in there. So for example, we need to know that um, we have to do node attestation. So the node attestation has to go in, the registration entry has to be added to the Spire server, as well as a Tecton pipelines controller and the change controller has to be pre-registered into the Spire server so that when, it, when they all instantiate and everything starts communicating, it has the proper connection so that it can authenticate, get a proper SFID, and do communication back and forth between the Spire server. So we'll see that coming up. So the second piece is the actual Spire agent. So now the Spire agent itself is gonna be running in the, the, in the Kubernetes cluster along with the Tecton pipeline controller and Tecton change controller. Uh, we're also adding in uh, CSI, which is a, the container storage interface driver. So what this allows us to do is that uh, in order for the Tecton pipeline controller and the Tecton change controller to communicate with the Spire agent, it's gonna use this driver instead of a host path. So it makes it a little bit more secure. Um, what happened here, as you can see, there's a request plus cache SVIDs step right there. So what's happening there is basically the Spire agent authenticates, it, it, it validates against the Spire server, so it's, it's, a, it's a known entity, and uh, it requests and caches all the SVIDs that it needs uh, in order to perform its actions. So the second piece now is now we're gonna have a connection, like I said, so this is gonna be the CSI driver. We're gonna use, utilize the CSI driver to connect with the uh, Tecton Pipelines controller, 
Um, so there will be multiple uh, connections happening here. So there's, first is the Spire server connection as well as a workload connection. And I'll go into more detail of exactly why there's two separate connections here, um, but bear that in mind. And then the, the third piece here is the tecton chains, right? So that one only has one connection, which is the Spire workload connection. It doesn't need to communicate with the Spire server, and I'll get to that in, uh, in the later steps. But basically, all the chains controller really needs to do is able to get a trust bundle later on down the line in order to do verification. So that's why it needs the workload connection. So let's talk about the actual flow. So how is all this going to work? So now that we talked about the architecture, how everything is communicating, how everything is connected, how is the actual Salsa level three going to be actually, uh, how is that actually obtained? Um, so starting off, right, we just have the Tecton Change Controller, Tecton Pipelines Controller, Spire Server running separately, and the Spire Agent. So we instantiate a task run or a pipeline run. We instantiate something, and it kicks off. The, uh, the Tecton Pipelines Controller will kick off and create a task run pod. Um, at the same time, it's going to do a registration to the Spire Server for that specific pod. So it's going to use specific selectors. So it uses a selector uh, UUID, in this case it's going to use a UUID of the task run pod, as well as the name of the task run pod, and put, the, put that registration entry into the Spire server. So when the task run pod does an attestation to the Spire agent, now the Spire agent knows about this, it can attest saying like, yes, um, you are what you say you are based on the UUID, based on the name, and then you get its SVID, um, which contains a certain signing key and such. So this is happening simultaneously. So every time a new task run pod is getting instantiated, a registration entry is getting added to the Spire server. Um, so both those actions happen simultaneously. And once the task run pod is completed or has finished doing whatever it needs to do, then the registration entry in the Spire server will expire and it will disappear. And I'll show you two of this happening in the demo coming up. So like uh, Brandon was saying before, the task run object, right? So now we want to secure the different, different aspects of it, right? So we want to secure the results. And we also want to secure that the task run status, right, all the fields associated with the task run are not being modified. So the first thing we need to do is actually um, hash and sign the results. So, oh, lost the screen there. Hopefully it comes back. There we go. Um, so what's happening here, so we'll, so we'll start at the results phase right there. So hash and sign results. So what's happening in that step is as, as the task run pod is progressing and it's creating results uh, and uh, whatever results are getting passed into the task run object, it's going to hash, uh, hash those entries, all those results, and sign it. So what's, it's actually going to use the signing key of the task run pod. So you can see right there there's, there's a, a test post get SVID, so it's going to use that specific SVID and it's going to use the signing key from there to sign the actual results so that they can be modified further on down the line. Um, and it's going to pass that to the task run object. And at the top, you see there is the reconcile and verify, modify, hash, sign, task run. So what that's happening there is that each time the task run object is getting modified, right? So the Tecton Pipelines controller is continuously um, validating and continuously updating the status as, as the task run object is running. So what is happening there is that each time it updates, uh, it's going to hash the status, the whole status object of the task run, and also give a signature and uh, uh, a cert associated with it. So there, that signing key is going to be the Tecton pipeline controller. So that's going to be, there's two different signing keys associated here, right? So there's the task run pod signing key, and then there's a Tecton pipeline controller signing key. So there's two separate signing keys um, that, they're, that are being used, right? Because only the task run pod should be the one creating results, and the task run the uh, task run object itself should only be modified by the, ta the Tecton pipeline controller. So that's why there's two different signing keys. So once all that finishes, um, what's happening is the Tecton pipelines controller will actually verify that the results are all valid. So what, so uh, I forgot to mention is that as the results are getting created, at the end it's going to create a results manifest. So result manifest is basically, all right, I expect these results to come back from the specific task. So if there's anything missing or anything added, then, then you'll know about it. So you'll catch that. So it's going to validate that the results manifest is valid based on all the results that it expects back. Um, it's going to check to see that the task runs pod, the certificate is valid based on, based on getting a trust bundle from the Spire server. It's going to validate that the certificate is still valid. And then it's, all check, it's going to validate the signatures are valid and then, of course, the hashes. So if everything is valid on the results side, it's going to create a condition on the task run object. Um, that's going to say, yes, the, all the results are all uh, verified and valid. And I'll show you that coming up in the demo. So after that piece, it's going to pass on, go to the Tecton Change Controller. Again, the, the Change Controller is going to verify the results. So it's going to say, is that condition there? It's looking for that task run condition. Does the condition say all the results are verified? If they are verified, then good to go. 
Um, the other piece is going to check is going to verify the task run, right? So that's where that tr get trust bundle. Uh, get the trust bundle think pieces coming in is basically getting the trust bundle from the Spire server again uh, to make sure that the actual Tecton pipeline controller cert now is valid, right? So similar to the similar steps we followed for the results, we're kind of following for the, the controller itself to make sure that the status of the task run uh, task run status is still valid after being passed to the Tecton controller. So nothing interfered between the when the two things. Uh, are communicating, right? When, when the task run finished, and then when the Tecton change controllers picks it up and, and verifies it. So if everything passes, everything looks good, then the change controller is going to you know, do, do its normal process. It's gonna do, create a signature, sign it, generate some attestations, and then attach that to the, to the task run object or to OCI, wherever you, where else, wherever you want it to store it. So then you can see from this diagram, right? So, we, we, so the, the, the slide that Brandon showed before, you know, we had those three vulnerable spots around the task run. Now we're, we're uh, using Spiffy Spire to hash and sign the results so we can, we can validate the results. We can validate the task run object every time it's being updated to make sure that only the controller is the one uh, making any updates. And finally at the end where the Tecton change is gonna validate to make sure that all the results are valid as well as the task run object itself is valid when it reaches the, the finish line. So let's move on to the demo and hopefully this Hopefully everyone can see this, so I'm going to. So first off, let me just show you what's running in my cluster. So um, here is my cluster right here. So for demo purposes, I am just using, uh, you know, my Spire server is instantiated in the same cluster, but in reality, you would want this uh, in a separate cluster, uh, more protected uh, Kubernetes cluster. So there's a Spire server, the Spire agent. Um, here is a Tecton chains controller, right? That's the other piece. This is the dashboard, um, so this is basically right here. I, this is this just like a visualization piece. This is not necessary, um, this is for the demo. Um, you can use, use it to like visualize the task runs and see all the objects changing and stuff like that. So it's just a, uh, a UI piece for the Tecton. Uh, here is the Tecton Pipelines controller, and then, and then here's the other piece of the Tecton Pipelines, which is the webhook. So those are the pieces that we're gonna be uh, utilizing today. Um, so I wanna show here real quick. So here is that dashboard. So dashboard, basically, you can see the different pipelines. So right now, there's nothing, nothing. I haven't instantiated anything, so everything is empty. So you'll see the pipelines. You can instantiate pipelines uh, from the Tecton dashboard. Um, you can have tasks and task runs and everything. You can uh, instantiate it. And as the, as the demo is progressing, you'll see, um, uh, I'll show you exactly how the task run and objects, how they're all changing, so it makes it a lot easier to visualize. The other piece here is the, uh, this is basically another, again, not necessary for the uh, purposes of Salsa level three, but basically it's just a modified version of Spire server. Um, so I'm just using a different image here, but all that's doing is it's gonna, it's gonna creating a, it's giving you a UI into the Spire server. And so you can actually see all the registration entries and all that kind of stuff. So for example, the, the first entry here is a node entry. So that's a node attestation that's occurring for the Spire agent for it to communicate properly. Um, and then you can see the Tectons, this is the Tecton Pipelines controller here, that's that entry. So I, I mentioned before that you bootstrap some of these entries in from the beginning. So those are the entries that are coming in here. So Tecton Pipelines controller and Tecton Change controller. So those are all in here um, so that they're validated. All right, so let's, so I'm gonna be doing two different examples. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna run like a build packs example. So it's basically going to run through a, a quick uh, two, two Two, uh, two task pipeline basically, and we can see how exactly it, uh, it behaves in a valid stance, right? So no, if nothing interferes with it, if nothing goes wrong, you can see exactly what at the output would look like. And then the other, other demo is basically gonna be, all right, so I have a long running task. Um, I'm gonna be a malicious admin on my cluster, and I'm gonna try injecting something into my task run as it's running, and to see if, the, the, if it, you know, if Salsa level three, Spire, all that kind of stuff catches that and invalidates the task run. So that's what we're gonna be showing off. So first off, we're going to do the build packs example. So right away, you can see in here, um, so a pipeline run has been initiated and there's gonna be two different tasks. So here's a fetch from grit and it's gonna build the trusted. The build from untrusted is not gonna get run during this step. So right away, the first one finished. Um, but before we look at that, I wanna show you this. So the build trusted is get, getting started. So let me maximize this a little bit. So build trusted has you know, four BMQ. This is the pod itself, right? So I wanna go into the registration entries. So I wanna see that entry come up here in here. So if I scroll down, you can see right there, there's that four BMQ. So like I was saying, as the pod 
when the pod gets created by the Tecton Pipelines controller, it's going to create an entry in the Spire server, and you can see the, the selectors right here. So it's going to be using the pod's UUID to, so when the Spire agent, uh, when the Spire agent communicates to that pod to validate it, it's going to check for all these things. So it checks for the UUID, it's going to check for the name to see if that is valid. If it's valid, if it's valid, then it's going to, um, uh, then it's going to uh, allow it to get the SVID and use it for signing and such. So coming back here, so looking at this real quick, so the first one finished right away. So it created two different results, right? It, commit, it created a commit result and a commit URL. Um, so it, more interestingly, we want to look at, okay, what is the Spire, the Spire backends are doing, right? What is, where is all the verification? Where is the hashing and signatures and all that kind of stuff coming into play? So right away, let's, let's look at the actual, um, so if you scroll down here, so, so in the results actually, so in the results you don't see anything, right? The results are, okay, the result expected, the task itself expected a commit and a URL to come back, and that's what came back. But behind the scenes in the actual task run object, right, you, can, you see a lot more things going on. So right here you see there's a termination message, the termination message for that specific container, right, it contains a result manifest. So this, that, that result manifest is basically what I was telling, like okay, it, it's expecting a commit and a URL to come back, right? If those two things don't come back, then something went wrong. Right, so it's validating that. Um, it's also getting, it's also has its own signature, so, right, so nobody else can modify the actual task run, uh, the result manifest itself. Um, here is the actual results for the, the commit value right here, and it's gonna be, a, there's a signature associated right here, so commit sig, you can see down here. Um, and then it also appends the actual certificate, so you can see the ending of the certificate here. So that certificate is basically the task run objects certificate because it's gonna utilize this later on and it's gonna utilize that actually up here. So that's what I was mentioning when the, when the actual, uh, when the task run completes, right, it's gonna go in and verify, okay, are all the objects, are all the results that came back all valid? Uh, is the cert valid based on a trust bundle? Is the result manifest? Like, am I expecting all the commit and URL, everything to come back properly? Um, and then it's gonna check the signatures and check the hashes and everything, right? So if all that passes, it's gonna create a condition up there that's gonna be like, yes, successfully verified everything, all the results look good. So that's the result piece. And then if you scroll up now, so now we're gonna talk about the, the status piece, right? So this is where the Tecton uh, pipeline controller is now monitoring and signing the actual status. So here is the status has itself. So as the task run is running, uh, if you actually catch it, if you look at it, uh, look at it closely, you will see the hash changing as the task run object is getting updated, right? So the only person or the only uh, object that should be uh, modifying a task run is the Tecton Pipelines controller. At any point, it does not see that, right? If any point it sees some unauthorized entry, right? If it sees the hash, like the status below does not match what is it, it had recorded, then it's gonna invalidate the whole task run and now, now you can't trust it because it's, 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 been, uh, it's been corrupted by some outside force that it had no control over. So this is the, as it says right here, is, that's the controller's certificate, right? And down there is this, uh, the signature right here of that piece. Yeah, the same thing uh, on this side. This one created this one created an actual image, so it, it output an image URL and a digest, right? And if you go closer to look into it, we can see again this is all valid. There's no um, if, and I'll show you this in the other example. But basically, if it was invalid, you would have another entry in here saying that okay, uh, no longer is this valid. Uh, Spire, uh, you know, there's some kind of tampering going on, so that it's no longer wild, uh, valid. So it's going to add another annotation here. Um, at the same time, you know, let, this is all successful. Let's say, for example, if it was not successful, or if it, you know, if it crashes, then this this actual condition message would change, and it'd be like, okay, this is not valid. Uh, the signed results are not verified, so don't don't proceed forward. So going, so here is the actual task run object. So this is the object for the actual, the build trusted here. Um, so everything completed properly. So basically what I showed you is the same thing. So here is the output. Um, so here's that image digest value. Uh, here is the actual, uh, uh, the signatures associated with it. You can see the actual SVID. So here's that actual certificate all in there. So all the, all the things is gonna verify that. And then if you scroll up here, um, right, this is again, the condition says is successful, oh, it's up here actually. Um, and then here is the other piece where the status itself is successful. So now chains comes into play, right? Chains is gonna come in and change is gonna validate, okay, is this, it's gonna look for this specific condition 
and it's going to be like, okay, this condition is there, so that, that I can trust that, so all the results are verified, so I'm continuing forward. Then it's going to check to see if the status is valid. So it's going to run the checks again to see if the controller, so this SVID, is that valid based on the trust bundle? Is the status valid? Is everything, is everything, is the signature valid based on the, the certificate? Is the hash valid? Everything looks good. Everything looks, if, if it agrees and everything looks proper, then it's going to come up here, and you can see that it did the signing, um, so here. So Tecton Chains did the signature, so it signed it true. And in this case, because I have it configured so that it just stores on the task run object itself, right? You can store it in, in OCI and other storage backends, but in this case, I'm storing it um, on the object. So you can see the signature, so it's being signed here. And then you can see uh, the payload, which is the attestation being generated. So those, those two entries are there. Okay, so next we're gonna look at is we're going to make it so that we can, we'll try, uh, breaking the system, right? So I'm going to be malicious and break into the, my, my own task run as it's running, right? Um, so what I have is I, I scripted out everything, but basically, uh, if you look at this, this is a very short task run, a task object, basically. All it's doing is like sleeping for 20 minutes or 20 seconds so that it allows, allows me opportunity to go break into it. <laughs> um, so that's all it's doing. It's a very simple task, but you can think about more complicated tasks and it'll be the same kind of concept. So what this, what this is gonna do is that as it runs, and it's going to change, so you can see right here, I'm using an image, Ubuntu image, right? Um, so what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be malicious, the code is gonna, like it, the, the script is automatically gonna go in there and patch that image and make it not Ubuntu, you know, make it something else. Um, so that now is no longer valid, so we should see that the Spire, you know, the task run status should come back as this is no longer valid, right? I can't trust this anymore. So we're gonna do the long range task. So if I go back here and maximize this, and um, changes that. So we can see this running. Um, so this is the non-falsifiable, which is that the same thing. And right away, actually, so you can see in here, the image changed, right? The image changed to not Ubuntu, right, which is that's not what I specified in the first place, right? So something went wrong, or someone, someone malicious came in and modified my image as my task run was going through. So right away, it failed. Um, so the conditions, because the image wasn't even valid, right? So even the results that I was expecting didn't even come back, right? So right here, you can see another, another condition message saying like, well, um, none of the results actually came back. So it, just, it, was just, it was just waiting, waiting for the results to come back, basically. So that's not even a valid condition. So, Tecton change is gonna look at this being like, well, the results never came back are not valid. So that's, uh, that's already one red flag. And then the second red flag is up here saying Tecton not verified. So again, it checked this. So as a pipeline controller was reconciling its state of the, text, the ta actual task run object, it saw that the hash is no longer matched. So now it's gonna be like, well, this is no longer valid. So I'm gonna uh, mark this as not valid. So what happens now is that if I, so now the Tecton chains will come take a look at this, right? So if I, go, if I get the task runs, um, I can describe that specific task run. Uh, so it's gonna be in this namespace. Oops. That's fine, that's fine. Oh, that's fine. And grab this. So right here, you can see, let me maximize this a little bit. Um, you can see that the, the task run itself is already complaining, it's that the, the status is not verified. It's saying that the results, results are not also not verified. There's a verification failure on both pieces. So now we can go up here and see that because everything failed, Tecton chains did not do the signing. So there's no signature associated with it. There's no, there's no attestation associated with it because um, because no long, this, the task run itself is no longer valid. All right, so that is the demo. So going back to the slides. So for uh, the future, uh, we're looking, so right now, um, this, this work actually is uh, a PR that's been created in both the pipeline and chains uh, repositories. So there's two pipeline ones. So there's a 4759 and the 8288, uh, 4828, sorry. <laughs> um, so the first one is basically the signed results, and the second one is for the signed task run. So those are our two pipeline ones, and then the last one is for chains, which is the verification 
everything, once everything finishes, right, the chains comes in and verifies. So those are our two things. Um, so this is still, uh, there's still a little bit of work left to do to get into alpha release, but so they're mostly, uh, the code is mostly all done. Um, so that, that's there. Uh, so you can take a look at it if you want to. And then the second piece is in the future, we're kind of looking to see if we're, uh, we can extend, you know, some of the, the Spire signing pieces into other custom resources, right, other fields. Um, and also within actual, t within Tekton chains or Tekton pipelines, um, artifacts that are getting passed between tasks, right? So currently there's no way to validate that an artifact, as it's, as it's, as it's getting passed between, between the different tasks, remains the same, right? So if there's a way we can do a signing of the actual artifacts as they're getting passed between the tasks, that's what we want to see, and that's our, our next step. Uh, thank you. Um, any questions? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's you. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, no, okay. Is it in scope for this to detect a modification, like if the worker node were compromised and the inside of the container just got modified directly without going through Kubernetes APIs? So, um, so two parts of it. One is like the worker not being compromised and then going into it. So. Um, so I think the idea behind Spire is that we want to do no attestation, and it's something that like right now is kind of like bootstrap attestation of like authentication of the node, uh, but something the Spire community is like slowly moving towards is continuing with attestation. I think the idea is that with the right monitoring tools, uh, you want to detect certain compromise of these things. You're gonna um, the attestation of the node is gonna fail. And so then you wouldn't be, the secrets wouldn't be released, uh, the keys wouldn't be released to the, um, to the workloads. So I think that's the, that's the first part of it. Um, for the second part of it, it's like going into the workload and doing things in that. Uh, I think this is, this is something that still requires being locked down, um, but it's given the current, um, the current facilities provided by Kubernetes to manage our bank and all these things, um, it's a pretty, I think it's, it's something that's pretty simple to kind of just have an emission control to, to reject the API. Uh, so this can be baked into the, the trusted computing base. Um, so with Spire now, our trusted computing base we showed was like the controller. Uh, you can imagine the trusted computing base that is covered by the attestations also includes part of the Kubernetes infrastructure as well. Yeah, that, that's the piece we were talking about. Future work is like, okay, can we expand this out to include the Kubernetes space itself? Maybe, maybe do uh, some kind of signing and verification so that um, you can detect, you know, unauthorized changes and stuff happening in the Kubernetes space. More questions? Any questions? Anything else? All right. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs>